Good evening, everyone. I am Gary Witherspoon, Deputy Project Director for Public Outreach for the Purple Line. On behalf of Governor Larry Hogan, Transportation Secretary Gregory Slater, and Maryland Transit Administration Administrator Kevin Quinn, welcome to the seventh Community Advisory Committee meeting for Long Branch and vicinity. Due to COVID restrictions, we are trying a new format this time out. Please bear with us as this is our first series of live public meetings. And please mute your mics and phones. Next slide, please. Tonight, we'll cover the important segment of the Purple Line that includes the following stations, Manchester Place, Long Branch, and Piney Branch Road. Next slide. You'll receive a project update from Matt Pollock, and Vern Hartsock, the new leaders of the MDOT MTA Office of Transit Development and Delivery, which oversees the project. For those who didn't know, Matt and Vern replaced Chuck Latuka and Jeff Enzer, and I have been trying to fill the formidable shoes of Mike Madden. He refused to leave me any of his purple ties and shirts. Matt and Vern will introduce themselves and fill you in on what is happening with the project. After their introductions, we'll update you on how the M.MTA plans to manage construction. We'll give you reminders about things to look out for during construction. We'll provide an update on the art in transit component of the project, and we'll tell you where to submit questions beyond those that will be addressed tonight. This evening's presentation is being recorded, so you'll be able to find it later on our website, purplelinemd.com. That's purplelinemd.com. There you'll find this meeting and responses to questions we could either not answer or could not get to tonight. We ask that you hold your questions until after the presentation. Then we will open the meeting to questions first from CAT members and elected officials. We'll invite you to raise your hand. This app does not have a wave your hand option, so you have to actually turn on your camera and physically wave so I can see you. Then you'll be acknowledged and you should unmute yourself by pressing Control Shift M as in mute or by clicking on the microphone icon on your screen. Non-CAT members who are viewing the meeting and have questions can ask them using the Q&A function on your screen. Just tap on the question mark icon, type in and send your question, and we will address your questions if we have time. If your question is not addressed tonight, all questions will be addressed later in a question and response posting on the website. Similar questions will be combined, so you may not see your question posted verbatim. Thank you for joining us. Here's Matt Pollack. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Pollack, Executive Director for Transit Development and Delivery for MDOT MTA, and I am responsible for the Purple Line Project. Most of my career has been dedicated to public transit. I've been involved on light rail projects since the early 1990s. My experience includes light rail startup and expansion projects in St. Louis, Pittsburgh, London, and Charlotte, to name a few. However, without a doubt, being able to join the Purple Line project here in my home state is a real source of pride. Going back a few years, I grew up in Montgomery County, and now I live in Prince George's County. I'm honored to be on the job, and I'm here to take the project to completion. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Vern Hartsock, our acting project director. Uh, thank you, Matt, and good evening, everyone. Again, I'm Vern Hartsock, the acting project director for the Purple Line. A little about me. Well, I've served with the MTA for over 28 years. I've been working on the Purple Line for nine months. Prior to that, I was MTA's chief engineer. And prior to joining MTA, I worked in the private sector for 10 years in a variety of technical positions, including uh, teaching college. 
I'm a software engineer by training, and I've successfully delivered many transit construction projects for light rail, metro subway, and bus. I'm a Baltimore native, and I'm extremely excited to be part of the team that's delivering the Purple Line project. I'll pass back to Matt for a project update. Thank you. Thank you, Vern. Well, while a lot has been going on with the Purple Line over the last couple of months, our biggest news happened quite recently, and that's what I'm gonna go over now. On November 24th, the state of Maryland and our partners, Meridium, Star America, and Floor, announced that we've reached a, a $250 million agreement that settles all outstanding financial claims and terminates the current litigation between the parties regarding the Purple Line project. Uh, next slide, please. Yesterday, uh, December 15th, the, the Maryland, oh, yesterday, December 16th, sorry about that. Uh, the, the Maryland Board of Public Works approved the settlement agreement, which includes the following details. Purple Line Transit Partners will remain as the P3 concessionaire. PLTP will proceed with just Meridium and Star America as Floor is leaving the project. PLTP's initial activities will concentrate on soliciting for a new design-build contractor. MDOT and MTA will continue to manage construction until a new design-build contractor is on board. Vern will give an update on the MTA managed construction shortly. After the new design-build contractor is on board, PLTP will be responsible for completion of the Purple Line construction and for the operation and maintenance of the new rail line. And you know, certainly additionally along the way, MDOT and MDOT MTA and PLTP want to facilitate success through our ongoing dialogues with all of you, the community, residents, and businesses impacted by the Purple Line. We're trying very hard to minimize confusion, and we hope that you will continue to see this as a collaborative effort. Next slide, please. With that, I will pass back to Vern to discuss MDOT MTA's management of the construction. Uh, thank you, Matt. Starting uh, beginning in October and continuing up through this current date, MDOT MTA and the contractors that we have assigned and taken over have been working uh, together to continue some very important aspects of the Purple Line project. Now, this includes the manufacturing of light rail vehicles that's taking place both in Elmira, New York, and in Spain. In fact, two out of the 26 vehicles are nearly finished today, <clears throat> as well as other key project components, including the traction power substations, electrical components, and special track work. This also includes completing the final construction designs for stormwater management and intelligent transportation systems across the alignment. Next slide, please. Starting with a few select locations, MDOT MTA is directing the resumption of on-site construction along the alignment. Now, as the contractors come online, the volume of this work will increase. As we sit here today, there's well over a dozen contractors that have been remobilized and actively engaged in construction work. A list of just some of them is as follows. Pessoa Construction Company is performing water and sewer utility relocations and concrete work. Henkels and McCoy is performing gas and overhead power relocations. MC Dean is doing systems and electrical work. Empire Landscaping is doing erosion and sediment control maintenance. They're also responsible to maintain the grounds around the new M that we've constructed at the University of Maryland. Traffic Engineering Services is performing maintenance of traffic support. Aves Construction is doing water main relocations. Interlock Steel Workers are performing steel installation. And Priority Construction is doing wool construction. Next slide, please. Now, in this time at the present, we refer to this as the interim period while MTA is managing the construction whilst we're awaiting the onboarding of a new design builder. And this is uh, the, the current time up through the next three to 12 months. And during this time, we have priorities in this CATS area that includes the uh, com to complete the East Portal uh, slab walls and, and invert in the East Portal section. 
and to continue the utility relocations, and there's a number of them, including water, sewer, and electrical on Piney Branch. I'll now turn it over to Gary Witherspoon for a list of construction reminders and an update on art and transit. Thank you. Next slide, please. Construction reminders. You should know that traffic patterns will change as work occurs as needed and work may occur on both sides of the road and across roadways. When a lane closure is required, a notice will be sent out via text and email, but you have to sign up through purplelinemd.com, purplelinemd.com. You may see orange cones and barrels on your roads, and they'll be in place as temporary barricades. And you'll see flag persons out there when required to direct traffic. We ask you to be especially careful around our construction sites. Pedestrian safety is, is as paramount as is the safety of our workers. We want everyone to make it home safely every day. Safety, after all, is our number one priority. And finally, you'll see uh, road plates as temper as uh, utility work is occurring throughout the corridor. Please be careful driving on those plates, especially during inclement weather. Next slide, please. Again, you can sign up for construction notices at purplelinemd.com. For project questions and comments, contact the MDOT MTA Public Outreach Office. That's us. Our email address is outreach at purplelinemd.com. And our phone number is 443-451-3706 or 443-451-3705 for Spanish. All, is, all of this information is on the website. We're manning our hotlines around the clock, so someone will be available to take your calls. They will personally take down your information and someone will get back to you and try to get your issue resolved as soon as possible. Next slide, please. The Art in Transit program, it is intact. We are meeting with and talking to artists on a regular basis. They've been made fully aware of the project status. Almost all of their contracts have been executed and they're now being fully managed by the MDOT MTA. Half of the fully executed contracts are in Montgomery County. And you can see the artist's renderings on the website, purplelinemd.com, purplelinemd.com. We expect installations to occur as designed in the latter stages of construction. Next slide, please. This concludes our main cat presentation. Before we open the meeting to live questions, Matt and Vern will address those that came in before the meeting. Matt. Thank you, Gary. Uh, we had four questions come in ahead of time and, and we're gonna answer those now, give you a little chance to uh, type in any questions you might want us to answer afterwards. First question, do you expect any portion of the project design to change now under the settlement agreement? Uh, the purple line does not expect any designs to change. Next question, is it possible to accelerate completion of certain infrastructure in and around the project that is disruptive to the community? The state is evaluating construction across the alignment, including areas of local community priority. MTA is actively working with design, construction, and manufacturing contractors to keep the project moving forward. Our focus is on completing design, permitting, and any unfinished work, first with uh, paving, stormwater drainage, and other utility projects now underway along the Purple Line Corridor. We remain committed to continue working with the community and local businesses to collaborate and find opportunities to minimize any impacts to the best of our ability. If the state is able to reasonably advance work beyond utilities uh, using the available pool of contractors, the state will do so. Okay, next question. What is the prospect for seeking additional federal assistance with the upcoming change in executive leadership at the federal level? The federal participation in the Purple Line project includes uh, $900 million 
dollars in full funding grant agreement from the FTA and access to TIFIA loans. TIFIA uh, stands for Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act. The state is not anticipating additional federal assistance for the Purple Line. And question number four. What new general timelines can we expect for completion of the various aspects of the project? Uh, the state will manage Purple Line construction until the new design build contractors on board. Uh, we, we do not have a new uh, timeline at this time. And next slide, please. I will send it back to Gary to see uh, what kind of input we have. We will now open the meeting to other questions from CAT members and elected officials. We invite you to turn on your camera and raise your hand. Uh, after you are acknowledged, you should unmute yourself by pressing the Control Shift M functions on your keyboard, or you can click on the microphone on your screen. Then you can ask your question. Uh, Non-CAP members and attendees who are viewing the meeting and have questions can ask them using the Q&A function on your screen. Just click on or tap on the question mark icon and we will address your questions if we have time. Don't worry, if your question is not addressed tonight, all questions will be addressed later in a question and response posting on the website. Similar questions will be combined, so you may not see your question posted verbatim. Additionally, we will accept questions for a week until December 24th at outreach at purpleline.com. Outreach at purpleline.com. Uh, I know that uh, we have uh, Montgomery County's Marcella Cordova on the meeting tonight, and we're going to ask her to say a few words before we address other questions. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I'm happy to report that Montgomery County and MTA continue working together to progress the project. In the past couple months, we have been concentrated on critical items for the county and our residents. The county's goal is to maintain safe construction progress and minimize the impacts that the Purple Line project is generating for the community and the private industry while we deliver this important project. We have highlighted some critical elements of the work within our county, including impacts to the county funded projects and their schedules. Uh, that includes the Bethesda South Metro entrance, the Capitol Crescent Trail and the Green Trail the overall work plan and project schedule for completion and service, the restoration of the county's public right of way to its original condition, not only once the project is complete, but also now during construction and while construction resumes, and the restoration of the connectivity associated with the construction of critical elements for the project. We will continue our partnership with MTA to complete the design and, progr and progress the project while MTA develops their new plan and schedule. We really appreciate and welcome Matt, Vernes, and Gary's collaboration and leadership. And I will gladly take any questions when you have them. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Michael DeLong uh, who asks, uh, is the Purple Line going to open in stages? If so, is there a timeline for when the Long Branch Silver Spring section will open? Okay, thank you. Um, I do appreciate that that question. At this time, um, we we ha have not taken a position on whether it's going to open up in in a single phase or as as was discussed. Um, I guess probably about a year ago was was going in 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 you know, the two phases uh, starting with the east end and, and finishing with the west end. Um, through the solicitation for the new design build contractor, we're going to be sitting down with them and, and working out um, the best schedule that they can put together to deliver for us. Um, and you, and uh, we are going to use that input for our final construction schedule. Um, you know, certainly our, our preference would be uh, to do it all at once if if we can do it in a reasonable time frame. But uh, Michael, I guess to an answer your second question, we, we don't know what that end date is right now. Okay. We have a few more questions already in. 
Uh, here's from Annie Token. Late this afternoon, I sent a photo of the pedestrian walkway from Flower Avenue into the giant parking lot. Who is responsible for the upkeep of this walkway? Who should we contact when there's an issue like this? Excellent. Um, well, first, uh, Annie, thank you for the email and for the photo. Uh, as we've said in the past, a photo is is great and it's very helpful for us. Um, actually, uh, Vern was chasing chasing uh, down your email and trying to get some results. So I will pass to Vern to see if he'd like to offer some some information. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, yes, and, and thank you again, uh, Annie, for bringing that to our attention. It's very helpful when the citizens uh, uh, bring items to our attention that, that are of concern, safety concerns especially. Um, while we're speaking now, uh, I have dispatched uh, construction personnel to the site. They're probably there already um, and it's going to be assessed and minimally it'll be probably cleared and salted tonight, um, but the, the final uh, determination of what will be done uh, will be, de will be um, uh, de determined shortly as we're responding to that in real time. And as for uh, who to reach out to, we have the outreach uh, phone number um, to, to call to, to issue any reports of any concerns uh, as that is monitored. And uh, again, we, we appreciate your uh, input and we, we look to this issue to be resolved uh, even this night. So thank, thank you for that, um, bringing that to, to our attention. And Vern, I have this just in. Um, I, I have received a text that says salt is down and and all across uh, the walkway right now. So that's fantastic. So again, thank you, Annie. We we do appreciate that. Uh, and, and you know, going back to the question about the outreach line, um, you know, when we first spoke, uh, I guess it was probably months ago. You know, at that time, our our outreach line was not being monitored with a live person. Um, you know, it was a message system. Now we do have a live person answering the calls. So so we, we do expect to get, um, you know, the, the feedback that you need through that out at that outreach hotline. OK, uh, Kick Gage asks, can we see the finalized stormwater management designs? Uh, certainly. Um, we can we can make uh, the designs available uh, upon request. Uh, it, it's probably easier just to send us an email, give us an idea of, of what you're looking for, um, and and we're happy to provide that information. Okay, Joel Ryerson asks about the bus stops on Wayne Avenue, University Boulevard, Piney Branch Road, whether they're going to be relocated, and if the Roos bus routes on University Boulevard, Piney Branch and Wayne uh, are going to be moved to another street. Uh, and I can take that one. In general, Joel, uh, the final setup of bus routing for when the light rail system is up and running has not been fully worked out. Typically, any bus service that is duplicative or following the same routes as a new light rail service will be discontinued and the bus lines will be set up to be with more feeders into those light rail stations. We advise uh, that you, se you secure route information from the bus operators. Okay, next question again from Annie Tolkien. She's asking about the art in transit at Manchester Place and uh, what is going on with that art project. Uh, Annie, uh, if you don't see it uh, listed as uh, executed, uh, that means it's still in the works, but all of the art and transit program is intact and continuing and all of the artists are on the job and they're working on developing their art. So nothing has changed with regard to that program. They, uh, the artists are still developing their work and they're still being processed. So uh, it'll continue. If, if the contract has not been executed, we have 18 of 22 executed so far. It ultimately will be. So there's no concern about them not completing the art project. It will be a vital, compo vital component of the project. Any other questions? Please send them in or raise your hand.
Questions? Fire away. Okay, seeing no other questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Matt. Oh, oh, here's one, here's one. Here's a la a last, another question from Annie. What is the current overall timeline for completion? That's a really good question, Annie. Um, I don't have an answer. I would love to have an answer. Um, we are going to need a new schedule from our from the replacement design build contractor laying out um, what they can do to to either meet our past schedule or to come as as close as they can. Um, that's going to be part of part of what we're looking at when we we try and decide who the best design builder is to to help us complete the project. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, take it away, Matt. Well, thank you, Gary. Um, I, I do want to uh, remind everybody again um, about the, the outreach number, so please feel free to, to reach out to us in that way. But most of all, thank you all for, for calling in today. Um, some uh, Actually, some unusual weather for Maryland, or, so at least for the Silver Spring area. Um, Having grown up here, you know, it used to snow a lot around here. I don't know that it really does that much anymore. So it was kind of nice to be out there walking the dog and see the dog walking on top of the snow and crashing through the frozen top and into the ground and freaking out because like she'd never seen it before. But, um, you know, certainly be careful out there in this weather. Um, and, you know, if we don't talk to you all uh, before the holidays come through, wishing everybody a happy holidays, you know, and a, and a great new year. We're looking forward to a, a lot of work, good work going forward. Um, and, and we hope that you will keep giving us feedback and, and staying in communication with us and, and helping us meet your needs as well. But uh, thank you very much.